The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at a tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came, and they were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon for this morning does come from our Gospel reading. I've entitled it, Welcomed at His Table. Gospel reading starts out with Matthew. Matthew sitting in a tax collector booth. Now, I don't know what it looked like. This is from actually the series called The Chosen. I like the fact that he's behind bars. It works very, very well. Whether that was a true depiction or not, in a spiritual sense, works very well. How does Matthew look? Looks pretty lonely, doesn't he? Is there by himself? Probably surrounded with a lot of money. Tax collectors tended to be very rich. But the people hated him. Here's the reason why. Romans required the taxes to be paid. 
And they had a habit in each of their conquered lands of raising up somebody that lived there to do the dirty work for them. People would bid. Bid to be able to be the tax collector in a certain reason, region. So you had to promise out money. I'll do it for this much. No, wait a minute, I'll do it for this much. You know what, I'll do it even more than those two. So to be the tax collector, you had to put money out up front. Once you did that, you had to gain it back. And how did you do that? Well, you collected the taxes that Roman, Rome told you to collect from your people with a little bit more. Maybe more than a little bit more. Till you broke even. But you know how our sinful hearts are. We don't know when to stop. Most tax collectors went on beyond the time that they broke even. And they became wealthy off the backs of their fellow countrymen who saw them as traitors and hated them greatly for it. <coughs> Thus is Matthew. Now Matthew certainly had friends. We read in the gospel lesson that he had friends he invited to a dinner. But it still would have been a very lonely life. Have all the friends that you want. Have all the wealth that you want. All the things you desire. Look at the rich and the famous. Their lives are still lonely because they're missing something. They're missing someone. The God who gave them life and created them to have an intimate relationship with him. They're missing the Lord. Matthew had a God. We call it mammon. We call it worldly wealth. Maybe even himself. But that God couldn't cut it. That God couldn't bring him happiness. Now we, like it or not, are a lot like Matthew. Paul says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were born in sin. We were born in a tax collector's booth behind guards. We were born separated from our Lord because of our sin. The Lord didn't want Matthew to remain apart from him forever. Or you. Jesus came to do something about it. Came to Matthew as he sat in his toll booth. Came and looked at him in the eye. And Matthew looked back at him. And Jesus said two very simple but very powerful words. Follow me. Matthew got up, left his job as a tax collector behind, left the wealth that he had there behind, and followed Jesus. Powerful words. Now those words out of my mouth or your mouth might not have had the same effect, but this is Jesus. And Jesus' words have performative power. They not only tell us the truth, but they make that truth real and active in our lives. And it did Matthew's. I imagine the Holy Spirit had been working in Matthew's heart. He realized that he wasn't right with God. He realized he was sorrowful. He didn't know what to do and on his own couldn't do anything. Jesus had to come. Jesus had to come and say, follow me. And within those words contained the reason why Matthew could follow him because Jesus had forgiven all of his sins. Had forgiven everything that kept Matthew apart from the Lord and off to himself. Matthew received forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life from the very Lord God in the flesh who came to give those things. From Jesus. He came to you. In your baptism, he came to you. Through the gospel message, he came to you with the very same message. A message that we heard when we first came to faith and a message he continues to preach because like it or not, there are times when we follow our sinful heart and flesh and put ourselves back in that cage. Jesus says, you're forgiven. All of those times that you appeal to your sinful heart and follow your lusts and desires, yes, those are wrong, but you're forgiven. I went to the cross and took those and died for them. 
the Heavenly Father no longer sees them, and I give you the faith to trust that what I have done in my death and resurrection is for you. For your life with me now, and eternal life to come. Jesus called Matthew to leave that tax booth and follow him as a disciple. Jesus called you to leave your life imprisoned by sin and through faith follow him as a disciple, follow him as a member of the church. What did Matthew do as soon as he started following Jesus? He invited Jesus to his house, had a wonderful dinner, lots of food, lots of fellowship. Jesus is there, the disciples are there, And now Matthew is there. What is this like in our day? What could this be a spiritual symbol of? The church. The fellowship that we have here. Yes, of course, those meals that we have, but even more so, our worship and what we do in this place. What we are doing right now. Jesus is really here among us. And we are gathered as his disciples, his people, that study his word and desire to please him and follow him and know that when we don't, we are forgiven. The table that's filled with all kinds of food, well, we have that in the fellowship hall at times. But in here, we have gracious gifts that go beyond that. Through Jesus' presence, forgiveness of every single one of your sins. Salvation from death and the devil and a certain and sure promise of eternal life and the faith to hold fast to that. Jesus' gracious gift poured out upon you over and over and over again with the work of the Spirit to convince convince you, yes, these are for me. That's worship. And we respond back in joy and in happiness and in love singing praises to him, singing praises and thanksgiving to one another, and afterwards gathering together with a special friendship and fellowship that you can't find out in the world. One that recognizes that we're all broken, sinful individuals, that we all get on each other's nerves at times, but it's welcoming with the forgiveness that God has shared with us. Doing what we just did with Leonard, finding those who are lost, and in that cage of sin, welcoming them to into our presence and letting them know, hey, we love you. Christ has forgiven you. He makes you good enough to be here. Welcome. Let's think about that dinner that Matthew had. Who all was there? Well, as I said, Jesus and his disciples were there. Real presence of Christ. But not just them. We find out from Matthew and from the Pharisees that tax collectors and sinners were there. Now we know what tax collectors are. People hated them. What about this term, sinners? Well, certainly those people that the Pharisees thought were sinners, but probably not just them. We like to paint the Pharisees in a bad picture and as being stuck up and off to themselves, but a lot of Jewish society looked up to them looked up to them as religious leaders and tried to emulate their dedication to following God's word. These terms sinners were not just those that weren't Pharisees. These were people who didn't read God's word, didn't go to the synagogue and study scripture, didn't try to pattern their life after that, but it lived lives that were totally opposite of what God wants and desires. Lives that were so corrupt and so evil, they were not welcomed in the synagogue. Prostitutes, thieves, adulterers, name your sin. People that had been kicked out of the synagogue, and as far as the Pharisees and many of the Jewish people thought, were beyond being worthy of God's kingdom. These are the people that are gathered there with Jesus and the disciples. No wonder the Pharisees came and said, hey, what's going on here? Your master eats with tax collectors and sinners, with the lowest people in the world? Jesus sets them straight. Jesus welcomed them. 
Jesus welcomed them there for a reason, to be in his presence. Welcomed them just as he invited Matthew to come and follow him. Welcomed them because all of those people gathered at that table there, as all of us that are gathered here, are suffering from the same sickness of sin. Jesus welcomed them into his presence to let them know, I have come to heal you. I have come to forgive you. I have come to be the medicine that takes care of your sickness of sin. Yes, what you've done is against God's law and against God's will, but I cover that with my blood shed on the cross. I have come to make you worthy. No matter who you are or what you've done, you are welcome here in my presence. I came for you. I came to reach out for you, just as I reached out for Matthew. You think about it. Did he make Matthew clean up or change before he called him? <coughs> Matthew was still in that booth collecting taxes. Jesus came to him where he was and called him to faith. Jesus came to those people, sinners though they were, to have a meal with them, to have fellowship with them, to talk to them, to let them to get to know who he was. He certainly in a winsome way shared the fact that their lives were sinful and stood against God's word, but he offered them the gospel. For those that were convicted of their sin, Forgiveness abounds over and above the sin in your life. An ever-flowing torrent, greater than your sin, greater than anything that you've done, covering it, washing it away, making you worthy to be in Jesus' presence. Who are those people in our society that we would kind of feel the same way that the Pharisees did? If they were to walk in here today, who are the ones that we would say, what are they doing here? They need to be here. They're really no different than us. We were in that tax collector booth of sin too until Jesus called us. They, without Christ, are stuck. Are stuck in their sin with no hope of escaping. That's why Jesus came. They need to be here to be in his presence, just as we are. They needed to be gathered around this table with abundant grace, mercy, and forgiveness that Jesus offers here in this place. They need to hear not just the law, but of his love and his forgiveness for all people. They need to experience that wonderful fellowship that we have as the church. They need to hear his word. Jesus is here in his word to teach people, this is who I am. This is what I've done. This is what my law says. This is all that I've done to raise you up, to lift you up, and make you my own. This is how much I love you. Discipleship happens here. Jesus calls people to faith. Jesus teaches who they are. That happens in the word and the sermon here. Most of you are members members of this church or another LCMS church, there are people who are not. We invite them here to learn. We invite them especially to our Walking Together class so they can learn what it is we confess as LCMS Lutherans, what we believe from the small catechism, what we believe about the major doctrines of faith, but especially what we confess happens at this very special table so that they understand and have the faith we do, that at this table, when we gather at the rail, we receive Jesus' true body and blood for forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life, to confirm us in that faith, to strengthen us in that faith. It all starts with people coming. People hearing Jesus' invitation, follow me through you. Follow me here into worship. Follow me into the fellowship activities that my church does. Listen to me. Listen to all that I've done for you. Hear the words of the gospel. Know that they are for you. Know that your record has been cleared of all the sins that you've done. I want you in my presence. I love you. I want to have a relationship with you now that lasts 
There's people out there that we could invite. As I told the girls, invite them once. Then invite them again. Keep inviting them, if not just to worship, to some of the fun things that we do and fellowship and friendship. Invite them to talk to you. As you ever have the opportunity, share Jesus with them. Share the gospel with them. By which he called you to follow him, by which he can call them to follow him, by which he can grant them the faith to have that special relationship with them, life now and eternal life to come. Be Jesus calling them out of that tax booth of sin and calling them into the wonderful fellowship that we can lead to the sacrament of the altar, to that foretaste of the feast to come that can lead to that eternal feast itself in Jesus' presence with his church, which has no end.